Hi, I'm Dr. Ali Rodriguez. I'm an OBGYN and physician, and I've delivered thousands of babies. I'm here today to talk to you about delayed cord clamping and cord blood and cord tissue collection, also known as newborn stem cell preservation. The birth of a child is a special occasion in every family's life, one in which many families invest months of preparation and planning. There are important decisions to be made about the birth plan and the practice of delayed cord clamping. The guidance for delayed cord clamping has continued to evolve over time. Some healthcare providers practice clamping and cutting the cord quickly following birth, generally within the first 15 to 20 seconds. However, recent evidence suggests that delaying the clamping and cutting of a newborn's umbilical cord may be beneficial to the newborn. Hence, the concept of delayed cord clamping, sometimes called DCC. Delayed cord clamping is typically defined as waiting 30 to 60 seconds or longer after birth before clamping and cutting the cord to allow some of the blood to flow back into the baby. The benefits of delayed cord clamping are clearly understood in premature births. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, or ACOG, recommends delayed cord clamping in babies born before 34 weeks, in part to reduce the risk of complications of premature birth. While the potential long-term benefits of delayed cord clamping in term babies is not as well understood, we know that delayed cord clamping increases blood levels in the newborn and improves their iron stores in the first months of life. ACOG recommends a delay of clamping the cord for at least 30 to 60 seconds in most newborns, including full-term infants, unless there is a medical contraindication. We know that the value of cord blood is far more than just the timing of clamping of the cord. Cord blood is a rich source of stem cells, which can be collected, preserved, and stored for potential future medical uses. Newborn stem cells found in cord blood are currently being used in transplant medicine to treat over 80 medical conditions. There have been more than 40,000 stem cell transplants worldwide using cord blood stem cells stored in both public and private family cord blood banks. Clinical trials using cord blood and cord tissue stem cells are currently investigating how these cells may play a role in regenerative medicine. The goal of the research is to find new approaches to promoting self-healing of the body by using the cell's natural ability to help with tissue repair and regeneration. Expecting families can preserve cord blood stem cells with a family bank exclusively for their family's potential future use or donate to a public bank for use by a patient in need. One of the most asked questions relating to delayed cord clamping is if you can perform delayed cord clamping and still bank newborn stem cells. These families should know that it is possible to bank cord blood even if cord clamping is delayed. Cord blood volume varies between babies. The size and gestational age of the infant can impact the volume of cord blood available for collection. One study indicated that DCC of 60 seconds or less did not significantly impact the volume of cord blood available for collection. Therefore, one can still generally collect enough for family banking. Even longer delays in cord clamping, which can significantly decrease the amount of blood that can be collected from the umbilical cord, may still result in sufficient volume for collection. It is important that expectant parents develop an individual plan with their healthcare provider, taking into consideration the various factors related to newborn stem cell collection and DCC. If families are interested in public donation, it's important to know that public banks have different requirements compared to family banks. Public cord blood banks often will only accept cord blood donations with higher collection volumes to meet the cell dosing requirements of stem cell transplants. This is because specific stem cell counts are needed in current transplant procedures. When cord clamping is delayed following birth, there is a decreased likelihood that the collection volume requirement for a public bank will be met. Therefore, delayed cord clamping might prevent a donation from being accepted by a public bank. Cord blood collection size is not necessarily a barrier to storing cord blood with a family bank, 
but smaller collection volumes may result in limited utility of that unit. Units collected for family banking are for a family's exclusive use, and depending on how the sample is being used, smaller cord blood units may still be acceptable. There may be more uses for smaller cord blood units in the future, as there's a lot of research being done today in the fields of regenerative cellular therapy and in cord blood stem cell expansion. Families who choose family preservation may still elect to store their umbilical cord tissue, which is unaffected by DCC. I hope I've been able to give you some additional information to help you in trying to decide about preserving cord blood with a family bank or donating cord blood to a public bank, and also discussing delayed cord clamping with your healthcare provider. Thank you for your time and congratulations. <laughs>